Welcome back to the Houdini Firmograph series. Today we'll be expanding our knowledge of bops and exploring a new node to make this little flower animation. Houdini lets you replicate lots of geometry controlled by point attributes, and a great way to use this is the copy to points node. It's useful from particle simulations to scattering rocks on terrain, so let's just hop into Houdini and check it out. You see I already have some nodes created, but let's just ignore those for now and we'll get back to them later. I'll start by creating a sphere and changing the type to polygon. Now we want to create points on the surface, so we'll use a scatter node. And you can use the force total count slider to adjust the amount, and then this relax iterations control will determine how evenly spaced out they are. We want to get normals onto these points to tell our objects which direction to face, so drop a normals node. And if you turn on this view normals, you can see that these green lines indicate where we have vertex normals. We're going to have to switch that to point normals, and then they turn blue, which is exactly what we want, so that they'll be carried onto the points. All right, so we want to take our sphere here, which I just raised up so that the bottom will be at the origin. I added a color and normals and then packed it. Packing is a way to instance geometry faster. It stores the geodata into one point so that you can make more copies easier. So if you see we have 530 points, it goes down to just one after the pack. Now normals work with the Z axis pointing out. So we're going to drop a transform and rotate this X axis 90 degrees. Time for our hero node of the video drop down copy to points node and wire the geometry into the first input, then the points into the second. You can see that our spheres are too big, so let's start by creating some attributes to control that size. Make a point vob node and dive inside. Let's try to reduce the size of the spheres first. Houdini has a global attribute to do this called P scale. To create this, make a bind export node and set the name to P scale. We want our flowers to look natural with some variants, so make a random node, connect it to ptnum, which refers to each individual point number, and then hook that to our pscale output. Uh, the random node creates random values between 0 and 1, which is why you're seeing the variation. So we're going to create a fit node and adjust that to something that we're happy with. Cool, so let's make those spheres grow now. So create another fit node and connect that to this frame global. I set my projects to start the frame 1001 for render purposes. That's just to ensure that we always have four digits. So we'll make this grow over 50 frames, setting the minimum to 1001 and the maximum to 1050. Drive a multiply node after and connect these and you can start to see we've got some animation. As MoGraph people, this is moving very linearly and we're going to want to add some ease. So to do that, wire in a ramp parameter node and change the type to spline ramp and I'll rename it to ramp growth. Hop out to the geo level and you can see our ramp. I'm just gonna change these points to B spline and then create a nice ease curve. And you can see we've got some smoother animation now. Now let's make it grow from the bottom to the top. So to do this, add a vector to float to our position and then a fit range. Set the inputs as minus one to one then we'll use the max to create an offset of 50 frames. If we add this to our frame global before our original animation, you'll see we get this nice ramp up from the bottom to the top. It looks like our spheres are just kind of growing out of the surface, which is sometimes exactly what you're going to want. But let's try to have them move into place so that they're growing out of nothing. So use a multiply constant attached to the position and set it to minus 1. If you add that to the original position, it moves them into the center. To have them grow out, drop a mix node, wire in the original position to input two, and then the bias here blends the two values. So if we wire in our growth ramp here, we get this nice push out effect. This is looking cool, but it'd be nice to get some variation on the different types of geometry being copied. Here you can see I set up a few different looks just using the different scales on spheres. Uh, we want to be able to switch between them, so we'll use the copy to points node's older sister, copy stamp. Originally, these were the same nodes, but side effects separated them to make the copy to points a little more efficient. What this copy stamp node does is it allows you to use attributes from the points to affect the geometry side of the stream, and you're going to see what I mean in just a second. We'll be using this as a switch between the three pieces of geo, so we want to make an attribute that is either 0, 1, or 2. So dive into the points VOB and duplicate our Y position setup by highlighting, then holding Alt and dragging down. Change the new max value to a value of 3 since that's the amount of objects we have. 
make a bind export to create the attributes, and I'll name this type. Now, since we want these to only be a value of 0, 1, or 2, we're going to use a floor function to push the values to the lowest whole number. And then we'll want to switch these to work in integers. So just drop a float to integer node to convert it and kill the decimal places. Now we need to tell the copy stamp node to read this attribute. So go to the stamps tab and check the stamp inputs. If you scroll down, we'll create a variable and I'm going to name it switcher. And then in the value, write at type to tell it to look for our type attribute. All right, almost there. We just have to actually set up the switch. So create a switch node and wire in all three pieces of geo from the packs. The order actually does matter. So I'm going to put our red spheres first, then the green ones, and then the blue ones, since that's the order I want from bottom to top. Just going to move the transforms over as well. And now in our switcher selector, we're going to type an expression telling it to look at the copy stamp node. So stamp parentheses quotation marks dot dot slash, which tells it to look in this geometry network, and copy one quotation marks comma, quotation marks switcher quotation marks comma. This is telling it to look for that switch variable which we set up, and then zero end parentheses. The zero refers to the number in the variable. If you're using floats or integers, it'll always be zero, but if the control attribute is a vector, you can use one or two to access the y or z values. I'm just making a null so that we don't see the input points. And there we have it, an abstract flower growth using VOPs and a copy node. The program files with extra bits of detail can be downloaded on our site if you want to see a little more. But hope you enjoyed this, and until next time. <laughs>